Hello everyone, my name is Emiliano Laraj and today I'm going to be going over the first laboratory for physics 2211 class which is uh, observing neutron cycle law and constant velocity. Uh, I'm in Dr. Fenton's uh, physics 2211 section. The objectives of this laboratory was to analyze the position as a function of time, so velocity, of an, ob ob of an object uh, and see that it's moving at a constant velocity. With observational data provided by Tracker, the software Tracker, and a video, and computational modeling, uh, like globe, globe script, I analyzed the movement of a peanut butter top rolling across the across the floor on a straight line. You can see the peanut butter top uh, in the background of of my presentation right here. Uh, we, do, we did this to help us understand how Newton's second law can predict different components of an object's motion, such as position and velocity. One of the main uh, ap applications of Newton's second law is to predict a future motion, so Vf equals Vi plus net force over mass times delta t. Uh, what if, we, when analyzing our video data, uh, we can see what happens if the axes are flipped. Uh, as we know, velocity is a vector, so it has two components, a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude, if the axis were, were flipped, would not change since it's the same velocity. So the only aspect of it that would have changed is the direction of it, and instead of going in the minus x direction, it would go in the positive x direction. So instead of being a negative, negative velocity, it would be a positive velocity. Uh, in the beginning of the video and on the end of the video, the, the, the can's acceleration is changing. So from frames 278 to frames 371, uh, those in those frames, we can consider the velocity of the can as constant. Uh, there's a constant velocity, which referring to Newton's second law, is because there is a net force of zero. We know from Newton's first law that an object will stay in motion unless an equal and unbalanced force act on it. So Newton's second law introduced this concept of constant velocity, and it says that if the net force acting on an object is zero, which in this case we don't count as we don't count friction as important. So in this case, because we don't count friction as important, there's a net force of zero. So uh, constant velocity means f net equals zero, net, net force equals zero. So vi velocity initials equals the velocity final because there's not a change in velocity, neither a change in momentum or acceleration. To calculate the, the velocity, we simply used the two data sets from Tracker from our first frame at time zero and our second frame at time 0 0.33. And this gave us an initial velocity of minus 0 0.4286 meters per second. In our code, with the initial conditions, we set the position of the ball the same as the position of x here uh, that Tracker is giving us. And uh, for the velocity, we also did uh, the calculation that we showed before. So th those are our initial conditions. Then for the calculations, we simply uh, did uh, an adaptation of Newton's cycle law. As you can see here, f net equals zero. And uh, while t is less than 3.0, 6, 8, which is the last frame, we just repeat and repeat and repeat with a delta t of 0 0.01, these calculations. So every 0 0.01 seconds, we have a new prediction. The velocity of the ball, uh, the new velocity of the ball equals the previous velocity of the ball plus f net divided by ball dot m, which is the, the, the mass of the ball of the can in this case, times delta t. And the position of the ball is uh, the position of the ball plus uh, the velocity of the can of the ball times delta t. And to advance the clock is uh, t equals t times delta t, which is this 0 0.01. And as we go frame by frame, this, this uh, time changes. In the results, the observed velocity and the model velocity are very similar, but start to differ slightly at t equals 1. The slope for the observed data is less than for the model data. Multiple factors that cause this deviation, uh, which are not included in our prediction, such as air resistance, friction, and you know movement from in, the, in another axis, like in the y axis in the c-axis, sorry. Uh, as a conclusion of this experiment, uh, I can say that although my model's predictions deviate slightly from their real motion, the predictions were highly accurate. The slight deviation could be due to factors such as uh, the net force of the can not being zero, uh, due to external forces such as air resistance, friction, and gravity action on the can. Also, as you can see in this picture, uh, on Tracker, you have to manually input the center, the center of mass for the object, and since it is inputted as by hand, it can have uh, manual or human errors. So that would be all. At the end of the video, you will see uh, the predicted motion that uh, that GlowScript gives us 
and I hope you enjoyed this video uh, presentation and thank you for watching it. Bye.